But joining me now is someone who doesn't sort of see this the same way I do, Michael Oren. He served as the Israeli ambassador to the United States from 29 to 2013. Thanks very much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. All right, so what, what am I getting Good wrong thing. here? Well, let's unpack this whole thing. There's yeah. a lot of information on all sides, pro, anti-Biden, uh, anger, not anger. Uh, let's unpack it, okay? In Rafah is the last holdout of Hamas. Yep. Hamas has four battalions there. Hamas uh, comes out of its tunnels in Rafah. It will retake the Gaza Strip. It will rearm. It will reorganize. It will stage not one, but according to their own leadership, 10,000 onslaughts of October 7th to destroy us. They also have in their, you know, on their captives in captivity, uh, 130 Israeli hostages. We hope most of them are alive. Many are not. The last chance we have of getting those hostages back is by uh, placing Hamas under some type of strong military pressure, because that's what worked, worked last November when Hamas agreed to release over 100 hostages because it was under a very intense military duress. So Israel made an offer. Israel made an offer to Hamas, which uh, Secretary of State Blinken said was extraordinarily generous. What did we say? We were yep. cutting down from 40, 40 hostages to 33 because we think that's probably all there is alive of that particular group of women and ill and aged people. Uh, we were willing to agree to a 40-day ceasefire to release many hundreds of Palestinian terrorists from our jails, and a great number of them had blood on their hands. You have to explain to the families uh, of the people killed by this terrorist why those terrorists are going to go scot-free and, and get a hero's welcome. Not an easy move by Israel. Extraordinarily generous, I agree, with, uh, with Secretary Blinken. It probably would have collapsed the Israeli government was that generous. Many people, the radical right wing of the government, would have, would have objected to it. But Hamas turned it down. Yep. And, once and Hamas by the way, just so we're clear, just, let's just stop no there choice. for one sec. I just want to stop there yes. for one sec. I completely agree Please. with you up to this point, right? I was very critical of the protesters. I was saying, why aren't the protesters demanding Hamas accept this deal? Um, if you want to talk about a ceasefire, that's the way to get it. Okay, I'm sorry for interrupting you. No, but let's oh, get to the part okay. maybe where, you, where, where, where we don't agree. <laughs> I don't think so. I think there's nothing really to disagree yeah. about. Israel has no choice but to go into Rafah. If you, but if what about, stop does Hamas the U.S., but, but let's talk about that. Does, does I, if Israel feels it has to go into Rafah, it'll go into Rafah. But it doesn't need to go in with U.S. munitions, right? They've got enough um, munitions on their own. This idea that this suggests that Biden is now abandoning Israel, that, that's the part that I don't quite get why people are so angry about this proclamation. I mean, it's what it symbolizes. Listen, Israel uses is American munitions. The vast majority of our, our weapons and munitions are made in the USA. Uh, and you know, I don't actually know what our stocks look like right now. I know they've been depleted by this war. We're fighting a two-front war. We're fighting up in the north against Hezbollah. Uh, and uh, it will have some impact on the battlefield, um, maybe even have a negative impact on the battlefield because we'll have to use older ordnance and maybe less mm. accurate ordnance, which I don't think anybody wants. I think the, it's the message that counts, Dan. Mm. It's the message to the region. It's the re at a very, very precarious time. We're facing not just a two-front war, but actually a three-front war. We're fighting off Iran also. Several weeks ago, Iran fired 350 projectiles at this country. And anywhere those those missiles would have gone through would have killed thousands of people. It was a huge thing. And America came to our came to our aid. We aid at that time. The U.S. Navy was instrumental in helping us to bring down those missiles, and we're deeply appreciative. We're deeply appreciative of the aid that uh, President Biden has signed uh, into law. We're appreciative of some of the many moves that the that the the United States has done to protect Israel in the United Nations. All appreciative. What's the problem with this particular uh, move of denying or delaying the the supply of munitions? It's the message it gives to the region. Mm. that there's daylight, that Israel's vulnerable. And I'm not sure if I were not the head of Hezbollah, I wouldn't take advantage of it right now. And I wasn't sure if I was uh, among the Ayatollahs in Tehran, I wouldn't take advantage of it, of it right now. And the, the tragic irony of this is that the one thing that the Biden administration doesn't want, more than all, all else, is to be dragged into a regional uh, conflagration in the Middle East. You agree mm -hmm. with that? This is actually, yeah. this move is going to greatly enhance that danger, I assure you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.